Hi everyone, it's Lynn Como. Thanks so much for joining in and watching Lynn's Copycat Art, where I take a piece of art out of the Close to My Heart catalog and show you how to recreate it. This one has a little twist, so I hope you'll stay to the end because I'm going to show you what I've done with this one page design to make two pretty pages using our Evergreen collection as well. And I've also moved the ingredient and product list to the end, so just stay tuned for that information too. And if you really like so I wanted to show you what is going to be our next project. Oh, this is going to be so exciting. I'm actually going to be using these mix-ins here, and I am going to be using those trees. So I just want to give you an idea that look at all of these really fun patterns. And that is the highlight of the next piece of artwork that is in this catalog. So let me turn to the page. This is our November, December catalog. I'm on page 38 and 39. You will see here this beautiful ensemble. We have a stamp set, stencils, and thin cuts. So this is the piece I want to create for you, this nice scrapbook page. And I want to modify it a little bit so that it works for me to create two pages. But you're going to get the gist on how to use the stencils, the stamps, and the thin cuts on here and a couple maybe a couple other tricks as well so i can't wait to show you so come on what's really cool about this is that you can just buy the bundle when it's available and it's um 44.85 for the stamp set the thin cut and both sheets of stencils so what's cool about it is you have all these very triangular trees but for me I also see pennants. Okay, so if you are a gamer and you like to go to sports and things like that, or any any kind of a celebration, birthday pennants or banners that you like to create, just look at all the banners and sizes as well as stamped images you can create for those banners. Think about your school colors. Maybe that'll work. So that's just a little something to consider when you're thinking about using this. It's beyond the triangle trees. This is the thin cut. So it does all of these trees that you see here in all of these sizes. And now let's check out the stencils. So we have two stencils. We have the open base of each triangle tree, all right, as well as the, um, style of the tree that you can do on top, the different geometric or swirls, as you see here, that we can do on top to get a really cool look. Now, I'll just show you on a piece of scrap that um, these are the two colors that I used, and this is on linen cardstock, not white. I wanted to see what it looked like on a soft gray. I used Seabrook and Sage on here. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but if you were dividing this in half, one half is using the brush or blending brushes that you can see here. And this side, which is a little bit more concentrated, are using the sponges. So depending on the look that you want and that you're going for, this will help you when it, it's time to do the background. I like the softer look personally to do a background, but if I was coloring in to go on top of a thin cut, I probably would prefer a little bit deeper or richer color. But you know what? That's the beauty of it. You get to pick and choose and play. That's what's so much fun about stencils. Um, let's look at the cardstock that we're, or the papers that we're going to be using. Mix-ins. So this is the base. And then we have all of these mix-ins. And this is the other pattern right here. So these would be your two pieces as well as, where is that other piece? This pattern right here. So those are your three patterns that are going to create this look. Now, as far as um, photo mats, you can pick and choose. Even the trees, you can pick and choose the colors. Now, to me, it looks like they cut off a quarter of an inch on each piece and layered it on a piece of um, cardstock, which could be glacier, it could be sage. So I wanted to just give you an idea of how pretty it is. If I take this color or pattern, just every time you play, this is really a great idea of looking at what do you like. That's French vanilla. 
I'm going to have both patterns so you can see. That's French vanilla. This is linen, and if I turn it over, it's the lighter linen, which is really close to this mix-in pattern. We also have mink, which kind of drags it down a little bit, but the lighter side definitely works better, but it's still not my preference. Here's sage. Now, it's so funny. When you put sage next to this, this becomes greener, which is so cool. I really like the other side, so I might switch over to this side because of the project that I'm working on, but it's all going to be the same kind of look. Now, this is really pretty. This is the lighter side of our sage cardstock, and then we have that linen piece, and then I have the pattern from mix-ins. So as you can see, and if you decided to do glacier, this is what's really cool. When you turn it over, it actually picks up the blue and that really works too. So if that's a color combo you want to do. And lastly, I thought I'd show you Seabrook. Now Seabrook really is very pretty. That's the darker side and here is the lighter side. So you know what? If I was playing with this side, I could pick, I would probably pick Seabrook or Sage or the linen. But I'm going to be using this pattern, which is so close to the linen that's in the mix ins, but this is coming out of the uh, Evergreen Scrapbooking Workshop Kit. Now let's talk inks. There's so many colors. Now this is where you get to pick and choose, but if you were doing something brighter, like springy or summer, Limeade and Jade are our two newest colors, and Clover works really well with them, as well as Evergreen. This is really a nice color combo if I was going to do something like that. But I'm probably going to think about fall, maybe a little bit more fallish colors, so I might be doing the Seabrook, the Sage, and the Pine. All right, let's do a little bit of cutting here. So the first thing you would always do is cut off your zip strip. So I'm actually going to cut it off this piece right here. And it is about a half an inch. Don't you love finding little scraps inside your trimmer? Been very busy creating artwork with evergreen. All right, so that is a beautiful zip strip. And I'm saving that because I know I'll be using that in evergreen. Okay, so we definitely want to cut this into a triangle. I'm probably going to use this side, but as I said, everything I'm showing you can be reproduced to match it completely or flipping it over and giving you options, which I love. The other piece of paper you want to cut is this piece. This you want to make, and this is where you might want to pause the video and get a pencil and paper. So you want to write this down. This is a seven by nine. And this is acorn. So the other side of that, isn't that gorgeous? I love that scratchy paper. Uh, so maybe you want to use that side if that works. And the acorn is seven and a quarter by nine and a quarter. This is going to be matted. Now you always have options where maybe you want to change out the color of the mat. So having the measurements will really help. Um, I will be using two photos, a four by four and a three by four. And they're, um, a four and a quarter inch square and a four and a quarter by three and a quarter. This is how I cut a triangle. Okay. Um, since it's a pattern that doesn't have any specific orientation works perfect. I'm actually going to fold this in half, making sure it's even all the way through. always a good idea to have your X-Acto knife um, when you're going to do something like this. And I will be using my T-square ruler, which we take apart. And I'm going to make sure that I have this nice and firm. All right. The Versa mat's great because it's a self-healing craft mat. And we can do this cutting right along there. So just be really careful with an X-Acto knife. The key is once you have this nice, crisp fold, you just line that ruler up right against that area. You want to make sure it's right up against there. Just push against it. Now you really want great pressure on the ruler and using that self-healing craft mat, just keep that pressure on the ruler. And before you pull it away, just make sure that you've cut through the corner. It's usually where I always have my 
little issue. So let's see how we're doing here. Oh. It feels like it's going through. There it is. See, it happens to me too. <laughs> Especially when you're on camera. All right, we wanna make sure this is right up against that area, holding that down and just follow that point. Okay. I wanna put my cap on this <laughs> so I don't do any damage. So what's, that's what I love about cutting it like this is now I can use this on page two. So remember I talked about this linen pattern. So this is the one that I will be stenciling before I glue anything down. Now before we do any stenciling, I wanted to show you, do you see there's a little strip here? Now this is where you can have fun. It's a quarter of an inch. This is Seabrook. That's kind of pretty. So if I'm going for a soft pastel look, go with Seabrook, really soft. I like the darker side. Uh, if you wanted to do sage, I like the sage, okay? I'm going for more earthy tones, so I like the darker side of the sage. So that's an option. Pine, oh, look at the pine. Now see, this might really appeal to me if I wanna bring the pine out and just to get back to this other piece, that's going to go on top. See, I kind of like, I'm going with either the pine or the sage, but we're not done looking. I mean, I love the fact that you have these choices. Now, for those who love glitzing it up, just check out, this is Seabrook glitter paper. Now, doesn't that really pop? I would probably change this whole thing. This would be a whole different layout look than the trees. But I just wanted to show you, but we haven't even done our stencils yet. So I'm, I'm just having fun with the possibilities of what that strip could look like. And then this is pine glitter. And this is really pretty too. Oh, the choices we have. Oh my gosh, we always have choices because we have so much paper and so many colors. So depending on what your mood is, what your photos are, what, what the theme is, pick and choose your strips and your colors accordingly. All right, when it comes to these stencils, I wanted to let you know those tips that I like to share about writing. What is the top of your stencil and the side actually, but what's cool about this stencil is you can um, flip it over, all right? So they work together. So you wanna make sure you have it lined up so you know which is the top and mark them both like I did. Now, the other thing you'll notice is these black lines. What does that mean? Well, I took a black Sharpie, and these are parts of the trees that are susceptible to being bent if you, if you brush too hard. So I wanted to draw your attention to that, and for, mine, for me as well, because when I'm going to sponge that area, I want to be careful that I don't keep bending it. So you could see I did this one here. It's already got a little bend to it. So this is really a great way to visually see it. Being that it's a black Sharpie, it should be permanent and it shouldn't affect your artwork. All right, let's get started. So the colors that I've chosen to use are Seabrook, Sage, and Pine. So what I like to do, and this is that linen paper that's exclusive to the Evergreen Scrapbooking Workshop Kit. Now let's get back to the layout. We only need to do a quadrant here, right? This triangle. So we don't need to do the whole thing. What I like to do is clip it down, makes it my life easier, and I'm going to start using the Seabrook with the brush. Now, you're not going to see a lot of color, but the beautiful thing is you want to pick it up and see, okay, no, I didn't get any color there. It's really, really light. So you'll see as you play. Now, that's another point. Before you go to your project, you want to play on paper. You want to understand your colors. You want to understand your pressure. You want to understand how your brushes are working on the um, stencil to see how you like it. So these are my three colors and I do like the way they look. And once again, what I will do is keep oh, looking at it to say, okay, I might need a little more color here. And that's the beauty of putting a clip on it, it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, I will see you shortly when I've had this whole thing accomplished. All right, so I've um, 
used by Seabrook, and I'm happy with that. It's a nice, soft look. That's what I wanted. So you can wipe this down with your chamois. So you just find how those trees match up. That looks pretty good. I'm going to clip that. That clip is so good. All right, I am done with Seabrook right now, so let's move that out of the way. And let's move on to Sage. Now, Sage is a little bit darker, right? I'm going to just show you here. Knowing your pressure is really important, right? So here's Sage, and let's go here. And I'm just lightly, I'm just really light. Now, this is where that black comes in handy, so I know to go different ways. But look how much color got. I did get a lot of color, and I didn't think I was pressing that much. So it really is important for you to understand the ink and the pressure that you're doing. Maybe you want one side of the trees to be a little bit darker than the other. So let's just see what's happening here. So now you can see I have some stencil going on. It's not perfect and that's okay. You want to make sure that you definitely catch the areas that are going to be showing. Now we're going to go on and just add a little bit of pine. I'm using a really tiny brush and I think I'm definitely going to dab it because you're going to be surprised at how much color comes out of that little brush. Maybe just go along those little edges. Maybe start on the stencil and work your way in. So let me show you what that's looking like. So you can see where I picked up more color here. And now you can see how that stencil came out. Now remember it's going to go with this paper. Now I'm choosing, that works, that really looks so pretty. It does, it's, it's amazing. I think I wanna to go to this pa side of the paper though. And um, that's the beauty of the choices that you can make and then you can decide what is it that you wanna do. So I'm going to be using this, but what paper, what's my strip gonna be? And the best part is you don't need a full strip. You're just going to, you're going to cheat it underneath here. So I haven't made up my mind yet what I want to do with these strips. Either one works, but let's just talk a little bit about our photo mats. So the photo mat is a three by four and a four by four, right? And that's why once I put that there, I'm probably going to go with the pine in the cardstock. All right, so I used the thin cuts and I just did a variety of thin cuts in, we had took Seabrook. This is one of the piece of the mixins paper. I wasn't sure if I'd like it, you know, it has gray on one side, the wood color, tone on the other. We have pine and remember the cardstock has two tones, a light tone and a dark tone. So you can pick and choose the side that you want. Uh, and I tried some sage. So we're gonna use some pine, acorn, ink, and sage. So one of them that are done in the acorn is this geometric pattern. And what I like to do is first, I haven't used these yet, is to ink it up, uh, or I should say rub it against my skin and to break it in. And I always like to test it on scrap paper. That looks good. So I think I'm gonna try this one on the sage, straight up and down. Yeah, and that looks pretty cool. And I'll probably clean that off. And there are just so many pretty stamps on here to pick and choose from, it's gonna be kind of hard to uh, decide. I love having options. So once again, I'm gonna test on scrap. That looks good, and this is in pine. And we want to do this one in pine. And I might do this one on pine, in pine too. Just we'll to take see. one of these small ones. We'll ink this up in, um, let's do sage on sage. No, let's do acorn. So even though it's the, not the same size, it's okay. You can still use it. 
and play around with your different size trees and color inks that you want like to use. This was another one that I really liked, and this I'll do in pine. I think I'm gonna turn that over to the lighter side. Then there's some really tiny ones, and um, we'll just see what they look like in sage. So you can see that one. All right, now you can see that I've used this side of the pattern. We've done our stenciling and I started to add my strips. And I want to show you, you don't need a full strip because it's going to be covered up. You just let it hang over the edge of the corner. And you wanna just turn that over and just follow the base of the card of the page to snip that. So I just have these lightly placed here and this looks pretty good, actually. I'm liking the way that's centered on each side. It's about down to two and three quarter inches, maybe a little bit higher, two and a half inches on the top. Just lightly gonna press that down. Now, if you're wondering like, where did this title come from? I really like it, best time of the year, uh, deck the halls. Well, that's our silver bells. And this is a beautiful sticker sheet that comes with paper that has silver and metallic gold, metallic silver and metallic gold. So you can see the best time of year, it's beautiful. And then you have a couple of little different um, sayings down here that you can use or up here instead. So you can have fun with that. There's some little dots on here as well. You can see these little brown dots. They're silver belt dots or gems. They have little glitter inside them. So you get the toffee, um, the white, I love the white, and the gray, all three come together, packaged together. So what you can do is pick and choose your title, which I love having that option, and decide. And the other thing I wanted to show you real quick was we do have these wood titles. We have all kinds of titles, but this one's the wood one that has happy, enjoy, and it's very thin. It's not thick at all. I actually put some paper behind here. Um, we have the best, the best life, happy life, enjoy every sweet memories, days. So it could be every day. It could be sweet memories, happy memories, happy life. This is optional. So it kind of picks up that pine. And this, you could either use pine cardstock or this is the pattern paper out of... Um, evergreen. So that is another option. So it's a little bit more earthy what I'm doing here. I could change this out if I don't like the sparkle. That's the beauty of it. And then we have all of our trees. So you can play around with the trees and see what you like. So we have this. We have this one here. So remember, I changed mine out from the evergreen to the different colors that are within this color palette that I wanted to use. I like the gray too. I don't know if, because it's the same, uh, if I was to change that out to a different pattern, maybe I could use this or not, just leave it, you know? I need to stamp that. And then there was this other one with the egg corn, which kind of picks up that look. And it really is so, so pretty. And then you can go and add any one of these dots. The white would work, the brown. Those would be my two choices right there. Well, now you can see all the different elements that we did, how fun stenciling is when you have an ensemble where you have the stencils, you have the stamps and the thin cuts, how nice it can work together. And remember I talked about pennants. We could easily flip these around and they can be beautiful pennants for any kind of layout or card that you'd like to make. You're just changing it by turning it around and you can use whatever color, whatever design in the stamps and you'll get so much use out of it. All right, would you like to see what I ended up creating with that layout, that one page design? I've developed it into two pages using the Evergreen Collection. I just love the way it came out overall. Here we have it. Oh my goodness, I'm thrilled with it. I love the fact that I changed the mix-ins out to this side of the pattern paper. I got rid of the pine glitter paper. It was just too glitzy for the look I wanted. So I changed it out to pine cardstock right there. You'll note all these little embellishments all come from the Evergreen Collection. And here are those triangle trees. 
I also flipped this pattern paper over to the white scratchy side, which I really liked. And I added some of this um, toffee dot paper. That's from Evergreen. You can see how I did all of the stenciling in the background. And now you can see my stamped trees as well. Love this little cluster I have going on using Evergreen die cuts and the scrapbooking workshop kit and the wood title die cuts. These uh, have a couple of different sayings like um, it could be best day, it could be memories. Um, there's a couple of titles in there and it's just all like a craft wood, but very, very thin. So it's perfect. And I just sponged them. So it says the best life. So here's where I put the life. Now you can see where I added that second page and I have the trees going right across the whole layout. Love this. Changed out that strip again, patterned paper, and I only had, I didn't have a full sheet of this pattern. So I just brought a little bit of that over to this side, like a one inch um, piece with a little bit of the acorn paper underneath. And there's that dot paper which pulls that around so we have this whole nice triangle thing going, even with my clusters and the trees, everything's working and that's why it looks so great. The tag is from Evergreen. So a lot of these papers are either mixins or Evergreen collection. And I love these die cut pieces with the sprigs. You'll find some of these in the scrapbooking workshop kit. But there you have it. That's taking copycat art but then making it your own. I hope you really enjoyed this video and feel like you can do something and I hope to inspire you to do more.